all of you who haven't met me, I'm Dr. Bonnie Hennig Trestman, known as Dr. Bonnie in the HD community. I've been part of the HD community as a healthcare practitioner for about 26 years, and I'm very, very glad to be here. This is, you know, I've been uh, uh, part of the HD North American camps for all five years that we had as a staff member. I run a clinic in my um, town of uh, Roanoke, Virginia, which is in the United States. I've been a director of a clinic in Connecticut. I do online um, therapy. I do online genetic testing. I talk to patients, families, couples, children, talking to anybody, professionals in, in the field. So hopefully, at this point, it's been a long couple of days for all of us, and it's great that you're all here, and we're just gonna talk a little bit about self-care. Now, what I'm gonna tell you is you're probably not gonna learn anything new. But if I can validate you, if I can encourage you to do things that you know are good for you, then I've done my job. So we're gonna get started, and hopefully everything will work, and if it doesn't, it's okay. Okay. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about what is self-care, which you all know, and we'll talk, we'll have an open conversation about that. Types of self-care, why is self-care important? Self-care plan tips, and the start of a self-care journey. I only have a few slides, so this is going to be a conversation. We have a half an hour, it's not a lot of time, but let's see what we can get done in this time. Why am I having such a hard time with this? Hey, Gavolt. Okay. You guys tell me, what do you think self-care is? So some of the answers are here, but anyone shout out, what is self-care? You all know. Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries, we're gonna talk about. Taking time out for yourself. Awesome, taking time out for yourself. Being aware of what makes me feel good. Being, you have things that make you feel good? Because I'd like to tap into that. I mean, it's hard <laughs> to find. I just met you a few days ago, but yeah. <laughs> Being aware of things that make you feel good. Not feeling guilty. Not feeling guilty, okay. How about feeling guilty but being okay with it? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody talked about, um, actually, you know, when we were talking about research, that you shouldn't feel guilty about, um, or you shouldn't feel bad about not being eligible for a study. Well, I, I feel bad about things sometimes, but then I let it go, or I try to let it go. There's a few people in this room who probably know that it takes me a while to get, let things go, but I do work on not trying to let things go. So let's reframe that, not about not feeling guilty, because guilt is an emotion, and I don't want to say you shouldn't feel guilty, but if you feel guilty, can we put that someplace else and move forward from that and, and reframe it? Okay, I like that one. Anyone else? There's tons of things. I can exercise. Okay, yep, exercising. And we're going to reframe so that doesn't feel like exercise, but we're going to, yep, yeah, moving your body. Anybody else? Allowing yourself to feel kind of vulnerable during these times. Mm -hmm. and again, not being guilty, kind of processing before. Okay. Yeah. Feeling the emotions, allowing yourself to feel emotions, but being able to move forward with it, move through that. Awesome. This side of the room. Go ahead, somebody. What is self care? What do you do for self care? Gwen, what do you do for self care? Oh, take a nap. <laughs> what else? Breathing. Breathing. Oh, maybe we'll learn a little bit about breathing here. Awesome. So all the steps, all of these steps that an individual can take to manage stress, as well as the act of taking care of one's own mental health, physical health, and emotional well-being. That's not news to anyone, right? We're all on the same page. You haven't learned anything yet. Awesome. My goal. <laughs> When you think about different types of self-care, if you look this up on Google, which everyone does, there's going to be pillars. There could be two pillars, there could be three pillars, there could be 15 pillars. I chose these because it just seemed like, I like an odd number, I, I like odd numbers, and I figured this kind of encompasses a lot of the things that we think about when we think about self-care. So let's go through some of them. Physical, you talked about. And I'm going to use the words being active. Because to me, I'm not someone who says, it's time to go exercise. I'm an athlete, and I go train. And to me, that's moving my body, and I, I'm active. So the couple of things that I do, the funny sports that I do, I need to move my body, and I feel those endorphins. I feel even on those days that I'm saying I don't want to go, or I don't feel like it's a good day to go, or I'm not sure how my body's going to act, I am going to go, and I'm going to go move my body. So don't call it exercise if you don't want to call it exercise. Call it being active, moving your body. Nutrition, and I don't know if we were, there were a couple of people that we were talking about at breakfast today. So I know that nutrition is, is, is difficult because not everybody has access to all good nutrition. I understand that. 
If you do have access, it's about the stuff that we put into our body. And that includes really good foods that are good for our bodies and our brains, but it also includes hydration. So really making sure that you drink water, that you are taking care of all of those types of needs. Sleep. Sleep is really important. So for all of my science people here, there are tons and tons of studies that do show that we have, you know, good sleep is really, really important for our bodies. Whether you are at risk, whether you are positive for HD, if you are human on this planet, sleep is really, really important. I don't have it on me, but the way that I monitor my sleep is kind of like with a Fitbit, it's called an aura ring. So it was really important to me to say, I'm sleeping, but am I getting good sleep? Am I getting into REM sleep? Am I falling asleep fast enough? And it was a reminder to me to say, I need to start thinking about winding down and getting into bed because I might have had sleep, but it wasn't good sleep. And I actually needed biofeedback. I needed as a researcher evidence, hard-based evidence to say it's, it was a good night or it wasn't a good night. And I adjust that accordingly. I just wear it at night. Medical care. So that is not only for people who are at risk or are positive or who are symptomatic, but if you are a caregiver and if you're saying, I need to get my loved one to the doctor for X, Y, and Z, but you are not going for your annual checkups, then you are not doing self-care in that way. You might be doing it in other ways, which is awesome, but I encourage you to follow up as somebody who loves somebody with Huntington's disease, that medical care includes taking care of you. It is really important. If you are saying, I need to go get that annual, I need to go get my, you know, my mammogram, I need to go get my pap smear, I need to go get my you know, prostate checked, whatever you know, organs and things that you have, it is really important to do that. And again, I realize all over the world that that's not so easy. And if we want to go to a specialist who we're not comfortable with, that's not great either. either. But hopefully you will be able to try to find people who you feel comfortable going to to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. We talked a little bit at ask, ask the Experts. And you'll hear when I speak, I enunciate all of my words. I was taught this, so you can make fun of me. It's fine. Avoiding non-prescription drugs and alcohol. We are here. We are in Scotland. Um, people like to drink. I know a lot of you were out last night drinking. I'm not going to, and I'm a mom of, you know, between my husband and, I, and myself, we have five adult children who live all over the world. I'm not an idiot. I know people, you know, are going to go out and celebrate things, or if you're upset, you're going to have a glass of wine or something like that. I imbibe as well. But I know for me that when I do that too much, that my body is going to start telling me this isn't so good. So yes, we're here. We're all together. We want to celebrate. We want to go out. We want to party. We want to have a good time. OK, work that in. Are you able to give yourself some rest days? Are you doing this too much? Are you putting things in your body you know, because you're at risk saying, screw it. I'm at risk, and I'm just going to take all of these risks anyway. I want you to think about why you're doing this. And again, in terms of, that's the alcohol, but in terms of the non-prescription drugs, please, please, please think about that as well. You know, my patients who come in and say, well, I saw on the internet that marijuana is good for your brain because if you have Huntington's disease, we don't have a clinical trial that says that. And I know you might feel better while you're taking, while you're using or, or afterwards, but we don't have clinical trials. But what we do know is that when you are smoking marijuana, especially when you have a young brain, and when I say young, even up to 25 or, or, or 27, it is really damaging your brain. You're going to feel more paranoid. You're going to feel more depressed. Uh, and there are going to be side effects. So I'm not here to tell you yes or no, don't do something. I'm here to tell you I want you to think about it. You've got this one brain, and we're trying to take care of it. So think about the reasons you are doing that. And just, you know, we were talking again this morning. It was like, well, physical. Sunscreen. OK, we talked about it. Ask the experts. Are you putting your seatbelt in when you're getting into the car? You know, are you smoking you know, cigarettes? Those are all things that's really important. And I, you know, I, well, it's anecdotal, because I don't have clinical research on myself. But you know, I am quite a pale person. Um, and I don't worship the sun. And I'm not somebody who does that. And I wear sunscreen when I go out. And I take care of my body as best as I can. But I'm 58 years old, too. So, you know, for me to know that I'm not somebody who goes out in the sun and gets sunburn or does, or does things like that, this is to me how I take care of myself. This is my self-care. So think about, is that part, could that be part of a self-care routine? So emotional is that next pillar, that next bucket. Feelings. Having all those feelings. Somebody was talking about feeling all those feelings is part of self-care. When you're denying a feeling, when you're saying, I don't want to feel that, whether it's something bad, whether it's something good because you're feeling like, if I keep feeling good, something bad is going to happen. 
That's not how it works. But if you're able to feel all of those different feelings and then do something with that, that's part of that emotional well-being self-care bucket. Relaxation. We all need to laugh. We all need to go and like, do a, a brain dump. You know, with, uh, I'm not on any social media except LinkedIn. Um, so, but if you are on social media and you see the people doing like a photo dump, I guess it's called. I'm going to sound like a real dinosaur, but a photo dump. You need to once in a while do that to your brain. You know, you need to have this brain dump where you just do relaxation. And I'll talk about this in a second. Relaxation does not mean going down the rabbit hole of social media and you look up four hours later and say, where did the time go? Okay? Think about that for your self-care. How do you feel after you've been on social media for hours and hours and hours? Are, do you feel good about yourself? Are you scrolling for that X? Are you stalking somebody? I give you a challenge to say, you know, if you cannot do that for a day, even a week, you can go on social media, you can go on the video games for a little bit of a, of, a, of a time, but if you're somebody who is addicted to that, if you're somebody who's going down those rabbit holes of the social media and you can't get away from that, that's a problem. That's not how you're taking care of yourself. Again, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just going to offer you a challenge to say, if you think about not doing that so much or setting a timer for yourself, that might be a way to offer yourself some self-care. And art. I put art one big blah right over there. It could be anything. It could be visual, it could be performing, it could be spoken, it could be sand art, it could be moving your body in creative ways, it could be music, it could be poetry. Get yourself involved in something. If you had, I was always somebody who was like, oh, I'm not creative. But then said, somebody said to me, but you know, there are other things. It's not maybe a picture or a painting. You know, I dabble in painting a little bit, or I dabble in this a little bit. And I never felt that I was somebody who was creative until I really took time to say, but I am, in, in different ways. I might not be Picasso, and I might not be Degas, and I might not be all these other people, but I can be creative. And if you just tap into that a little bit and allow yourself to say, can I do this? Can I dabble in this? Can I even collect art? I love to go look at art. I love to go into galleries. That, to me, is self-care. That helps me. Because when I look at art, especially paintings and sculptures that I like to collect, I have an emotion. And it brings out an emotion because I identify with something and it makes me feel a certain way. That is self-care. Talking. So under that, when we're talking about those emotions, under the bucket of emotion, being able to talk to people about this. We're going to get into a little bit more under social, but just being able to talk about how you are feeling and connect in terms of some of those feelings that we just were talking about in terms of, of recognizing some emotions and being able to talk about it. So again, this is a little bit of smorgasbord, tapas kind of thing, falling under these different categories. Psychological is a little bit different than emotional because to me, it's a little bit about learning. So when you are here at this conference and you're feeling that brain, you know, that your brain is getting full, it is a way of self-care because you're being educated. We find out new information that we can bring back or it validates oh. us, which is awesome. So to me, that psychological pillar or bucket about thinking and learning and also that mindfulness. We'll talk a little bit about that because that's one of those like earthy, crunchy terms of, you know, I'm not into mindfulness and I'm not into all of that stuff. But it's about trying to just reflect for yourself to be able to say, can I quiet my mind, even if it's going to be for five minutes? And if you allow me later on, we might try something. You don't have to take part in it. I'm not hypnotizing you. You're in total control. You can walk out, you can close your eyes. We'll see if it works if you're willing to do that with me. But I want to ask you afterwards how you feel when you take just a couple of minutes to just reflect on you. And also, when we talked about that brain dump of decluttering, those cobwebs in your head. This is what happens at these conferences. You're going to be filled up, and you need to declutter every once in a while. Spiritual. I just stuck beliefs in there because I don't care what background you are, I don't care what nationality you are, I don't care what you believe, let's just put it in that. Whatever you believe, whatever, whether it's religion, whether it's about your morals and values, whether you are spiritual in terms of connecting with nature, the people that know me here who know that I went to the camps, I am not an outdoor person, also why I'm extremely pale. It is not my jive, but I know that there are people who just want to get into a forest or go to a beach or just be at their place, you do you, boo. You know, you, you go and you do that. 
but that is spiritual for a lot of people. So embrace that because that is self-care when you get out there and you want to be out in nature and you connect with the stars and all the scary animals that are out there and you know, all those things that will, will send me you know, running for the hills or running for a city at least. So I think that that's also really important to know that that is self-care. All I'm doing here is identifying things that you already have all of these buckets, I'm sure, but it's hopefully going to validate you. And social, that's what we're doing here. So whether it's connecting with a neighbor. I live in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, where my next neighbor is not too far away, and, you know, but I've lived in cities where my next neighbor was right next door, and for years and years, I didn't know who that person was. You know, or that they live miles away, uh, and I would see them at a store sometimes, and you know, I would never say hello to them. But if we just connect with people and just say hello, like the challenge that I gave you at the Ask the Experts, did you go and say hello to one other person who you didn't know just to say, hi, my name is so-and-so, who are you and where are you from? Right? It's just about connecting with people because I think that that is so important. Obviously, friends, that is really, really important to say. When I talk to patients and they say, I say, who are you, who's your support system? They say, nobody. Okay, I know it feels like nobody, but is there one person well, there's this person, but they're busy. There's one person. When's the last time you reached out to them? Well, they're busy. I didn't ask that. I just said, when's the last time you reached out to them? And is that a possibility that you can send a text or a call or just try to connect with somebody? And, you know, I didn't put um, family here, you know, and that was probably, you know, on my, my part because I have chosen family. You know, I have some blood relatives and that's fine. There's a lot of people in my family that, you know, are, are not people that are, are my people. And that's okay. You know, I think that that is fine to be able to do. But with community, I feel like that is your chosen family, your family, the people that bring you joy that are not toxic to be around. And I think that's really, really important to be able to identify. It doesn't have to be blood. You need to be around your people, your chosen people. That's going to be self-care. For someone to say to you, well, we're blood and you have to or you have to do this, that's, it's not okay. All right, Just please know that you need to do you. You need to be around positive people. So just because somebody has the same last name or is a blood relative or somewhere down the line somebody married somebody, that, that doesn't mean that those have to always be your people. Sometimes we get lucky, and they are, and that's awesome, but not all the time. So chosen family is family as well in groups. So whether that's a support group, whether that is um, you know, groups that you are with your hobbies, whatever that is, get involved, get engaged. If you have a little bit of an inkling of something that you like to do, go find them. Go find your people. They're out there. They just, they're not going to come knocking at your door. You just need to be brave and knock on their door. And I think just, just challenge yourself to be able to do that because that's part of self-care. And somebody did say boundaries. And I think that that's really, really important. So again, saying no is OK. Limit setting, being able to say, you know, I can't do that today. I'm really sorry I can't do that today is not a bad thing. That is about self-care. So you need to check in with you if you're somebody who always says yes. Why? Why is that? Again, you don't have to answer it. Just to think about for yourself, why do I always say yes? Am I looking for somebody to always give me that affirmation? Am I the one that, you know, that people call that Mother Teresa, that person that always going, is going to help? Who's taking care of you? And I think that that's really important to be able to understand why self-care is important. Why is this not working? OK. There we go. All right, why is self-care important? Research does show, so all my science people here, that in addition to keeping you healthy, self-care can improve overall well-being. That's documented. There are, there are trials. There are people who, um, uh, scientists and researchers that have people who say, okay, when you're going to go home, you're going to do X, Y, and Z for self-care. You guys are going to go and sit on the couch and eat you know, potato chips and, and do nothing or whatever it is. And we were able to figure out, is this important? It is. It truly is important. And you, again, you're not learning anything. You all know that. It can help reduce stress and enhance your quality of life. Right? It's like, well, how can that really do it? It can. We're going to show, hopefully, I think we will, that body and brain, that whole body-brain connection is really important. If we take care of our body, it takes care of our, our brain. If we take care of our brain, it takes care of our body. And it helps you to manage the, stress, uh, the daily stresses in your life. Also, if we can't meet others' needs, if we, we can't meet others' needs if we neglect our own. How many people flew in by plane? Had one, one plane ride. Okay. 
when you, and then the flight attendants who you probably didn't listen to um, were talking and said, when that mask thing comes down, what's the first thing you do? They say, <laughs> what do you do? You write your hair yourself. Yeah, you, you take your hair yourself, right? Put your oxygen mask on first before you help somebody else. Why do they say that? Okay, what would happen if you didn't? You might not get yours on. Okay, you might not get yours on. If I'm trying to help somebody who's next to me and I don't put that oxygen mask on and oxygen starts you know, being absorbed in, in the airplane and I'm starting to feel a little lightheaded because I'm having trouble keeping my toddler, you know, getting their mask on and everything. If that person, if I go down, then that person's going to go down as well. So it is absolutely really important that we try to meet our needs and that will give us enough energy and enough motivation and enough battery, to, enough in our battery to recharge our battery to be able to help somebody else. Now that's different than that boundary of always saying yes. It is, like you were saying, it's just about self-care. You just took a day yesterday where you needed to go back to the hotel. I did that as well. My hotel is way yonder over there because I know for me, if I was involved all the time 24-7, I wouldn't be good to anybody. I needed to take some time to separate myself to say when I'm there, that's my time. Not selfish. It's just that I know me and I know that I have a limited capacity. So if I recharge my battery, I come back and I say, I'm here for you. Now it's really, really important as we were talking about that, that whole mind-body connection because I really do feel that when people are talking to themselves and they go around and they say, I'm no good, or I suck at this, or this is going to be awful because you know, I'm, just, I, you know, I'm an imposter, I'm not good here. Any of that negative talk is a self-fulfilling prophecy because that is our brain talking and our body is going to listen. And I'm going to do an experiment with you guys. So um, I do need a volunteer. Um, I do, and it's nothing scary again. And it's going to work, it'll be fine, but it's going to have to be somebody who can sit still and who can at least grab and hold something. Come on, Lauren. So she's gonna come up, and you're gonna sit in this chair here. I have a necklace, and I actually have been looking at all of you. I saw Dina has a necklace as well. Please sit here, face everyone. Excellent, thank you. And when I tell you, are you gonna be able to just kind of put your elbow onto your knee and just kind of go, yeah, ex ex excellent. Okay, so hold on to that. I have a necklace. I bought this off the internet. I'll tell you where. There is a, a, a German fashion designer. I like fashion. And there's a show in the United States called Making the Cut. And I think it's a really cool show. And there is a German uh, fashion designer, Esther Perbrandt, who I really think, I like her philosophy. I like her jive. I like what she stands for. I think she's really cool. So when she came in second place, I did want to support her and I went onto the website. This is not a trick. What I'm going to do today, right now, is not a trick. You, can, I sh you should. You should, I tell you people, I don't tell them what to do. If you want to, you can go home and you can get a string or a necklace that has something heavy on it. So this, um, it looks like a little pill. And for people who are uh, sci-fi nerds, which I am not yet, my husband's trying, it's from The Matrix. And on it, it says, free your mind, right? Remember the blue and the, and the red pill? Okay, I just think that, you know, he got me into this stuff and he's like, what do you think? I'm like, this stuff is so cool. Um, so this, she was able to collaborate with the cast of The Matrix and she came up with this little pendant which you can go on and you can buy from her website. So long story of this is not a trick. There's nothing that I'm going to show you that is a, a trick here. You can go home, you can do it tonight, you can get a string and a really heavy washer. Or as long as you're able to sit down and you can um, grasp something and just be as still as possible which I can see that you can do. All right, you're with me on this. Excellent. Okay, what I would like you to do is either hand, I want you to just hold this necklace, my necklace, in your pointer and your thumb, okay? And what I'm going to do, you're going to balance that on your leg like I was showing you, just like that, but a little bit further out. And balance, you know, balance your elbow on your leg. Thank you so much. Perfect. All right, I know this is going to be hard to see and I, I apologize. If people, you know, um, let's get you a little bit further back so that people can see a little bit. All right. All right, have a seat here. Thank you. Thank you. Same thing, same position. I'm going to hold this really still, okay? I'm gonna stop this from moving. I don't want you to move, but I want you to think mentally that you want the pendant to go back and forth. I'm gonna keep this as still as I possibly can, and I want you to think back and forth, just mentally. And we're gonna wait a little bit, and it's gonna take a little while, and that's fine, but I want you to think back and forth, that you're going to move that pendant back and forth, back and forth in a line. Back and forth in the line. 
back and forth, think back and forth, just do that with your mind, going back and forth. In a straight line, back and forth, there you go. Back and forth. Now what I want you to do, Lauren, is to think about having it go in a circle. It's a little bit of a circle. It's going back and forth now in a straight line, so that's excellent. Without thinking and without moving, I want you to think circle. Make the pendant go in a circle. And it might take a couple of seconds, that's fine, but I want you to think back and forth, uh, sorry, make the pendant go in a circle. Circle. Think about a circle. Do you guys see it? What's, it hap what's happening? Okay, keep going, keep going, Lauren. Can you make it go into a little bit of a bigger circle? Don't move anything except your, um, your mind. I want you to think, go, go into a circle. Circle. Now what I want you to think is to reverse the circle. So right now it's going clockwise, and I want you to think about, well, when already reversed, as soon as I said that. Think about in a, in a reverse in a circle. So now it's going counterclockwise. Right. And in a bigger circle. You guys see that, right? Okay. Bigger circle. You guys see that in the back? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yay. She's brave. You all can do this. You all can go home, take a pendant, do something like this, hold it up, balance it. This is your mind eavesdropping on your body and your body eavesdropping on your mind. I've done this to myself. I sat and go, oh, that's not going to work. You know, and I'm like, okay. So the biz biggest skeptic, I also want you especially to really think about doing this. Can you hold this? Can you think about having it go straight across? Can you think about then going into a circle? Can you reverse the circle? Can you make it smaller? Can you make it bigger just with your mind? And the answer is yes, you can. And that proves to you that your mind and your body are working together. So when you walk around and say, I suck, I have no friends, nobody's going to like me, your body's going to go, yup, that's what's happening. But if you walk around, and I'm not saying walk around going, oh, I'm the greatest of all time. Okay, well, maybe you want to, and I give you, I give you props for, for confidence. That's fine. I give you props for confidence for that. But if you say to yourself, today might be an okay day. I woke up today, and if I have just a little bit of grace to say thank you. So I was telling you before that I'm an athlete, and one of the things I do is I fence. I'm a fencer, and I compete nationally and internationally. And I get really, really very anxious when I go into some of my major competitions. And do, you, do you know what fencing is? Does anyone know? If, okay, so I play with swords, okay. And I stab people, and I like it. Um, and I like winning a lot. So when I go into these competitions, I'm really, really nervous. And I'm just looking around and sizing people up and just going, okay, well, if I say to myself, you're not going to do well today, you're going to fulfill that prophecy. You're going to not do well today. But if I go in to say, my body has allowed me to get here, and I'm able to be here and to be around these people and to compete against them, and this is an opportunity for me, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to do my best. I have just set the stage for me to walk in in a much better position than if I say, oh, I suck and I'm going to lose. So I want you to at least challenge yourself and think, is that something that you possibly can do to wake up every day to say, Thank you, body, for letting me get up. Thank you for allowing me to be here. It's just a possibility for you guys, and I would challenge you on that. You know, I think it's because I'm a lefty, and this is what... Okay, so let's talk about self-care plan. Really, very easy. Examples of self-care plan, maintaining that regular sleep, eating as healthy as you possibly can, um, uh, exercising, we talked about you know, being moving your body instead of calling it exercising. Can you see it there? It's better here. Spending time in nature for people who like to do that. Engaging in any kind of hobbies. Connecting with others. We talked about setting boundaries. And again, that expressing gratitude. If you are able to, whatever you believe, you believe in yourself. No matter what you believe outside yourself, believe in yourself and to be able to say thank you. Thank you, body, for being able to get me here. Thank you, body, for allowing me to do this, to learn, to be around other people. If you are able to express gratitude, that's the start of your self-care plan. 
So here's the caveats, because Dr. Bonnie always has caveats. In order for self-care to work, you need to do it dis consistently. So we can talk about breathing exercises, we can talk about doing stuff. If you do it once or twice, and if you only do it when you're stressed out, that's gonna be really hard to do, right? So if you go and somebody is, um, if you're upset about something and someone's screaming at you, calm down, calm down, that is not gonna work. But it's, if you are able to say, you know what, we did some breathing exercises when you were feeling good, and now I remember, and my body remembers how to do that, now that I need it, I'm gonna start doing that, because I've practiced that. So it's very important to have routines, and the routines would be about sleep. The routines would be about trying to eat healthy. The routines would be about using sunscreen, putting on your seat belt, and you know, hydrating yourself. Those are routines that you just do every single day, and it can be really helpful because then you don't have to think about it. So as we talked a little bit about, entertainment is one part of self-care, and it is important. It is important for you to connect, to laugh, to, to be uh, amused, to go to a movie and cry and feel all these emotions. That is fine. But if you go down that rabbit hole of watching videos and playing video games for hours and hours and hours on end, then that's not entertainment. You know, that's an addiction at that point. So really do consider that. And we all fall into those rabbit holes. You know, so don't, I think it's really important to acknowledge that and not beat yourself up for that. Perfect is impossible. If you strive for, perfect, for perfection, you have already set yourself up. If you say, I'm going to do the best I possibly can and I'm prepared for that, then that's a really good way to start. If you say to yourself, I'm just going to try to uh, imbibe in this hobby, I'm going to try photography, I'm going to try to do something you know, that I haven't done before, that's fine. Perfect is impossible and start small. <coughs> Also, please do know that self-care can look different for everyone, but to count as self-care, the behavior should promote health and happiness. So think about why you're doing these things as well. If it's bringing you some joy, if you are feeling better after it, then it is self-care. And starting the self-care journey, you're already here. You started it. You are here. For some of you, it's your first time. Sometimes for some of you, it might be the first time uh, traveling outside of where you live. That is amazing. That is something to be proud of. So I think that that's really important to know that you have already started to do that. You're in this room, so you already are saying, hmm, what's this all about? And be proactive. So the tip I'm giving you is to give people the script. So in terms of that, I mentioned that at the Ask the Experts. There is this post-conference slump that happens. It, it happens to professionals. It happens to people, first-timers. It happens if this is your 420th conference. We are here, there's energy, you don't need to explain Huntington's disease to anybody in this room, and that's great. But when you go home, all of a sudden that structure is not there and the people are not there. That is real. You don't need to beat yourself up about it, but just know that you can give yourself grace. As I talked to people this morning, they said, I took tomorrow off. I took the next day off. I took a little bit of time so I can just kind of let my body recover from all of this. You know, this is going to be at camps that, you know, Gwen and, and other people who have gone to camps or have been with, um, who I have been with at the camps, we will find kids who come in by themselves and then a day later, this is their BFF. And that's amazing, but the BFF lives across the country, and it's going to feel a little bit different after that. And that's okay, because they can stay connected. And as the tip I gave you and ask the experts, try to connect with people and say, let's plan something for a month now, even if it's just a phone call. Something, just so that you can have something as a follow-up. When you come into my office, I do not let you leave until we say, let's make that next appointment, okay? You can cancel that and I can cancel that, we can change it, but I get you to make that appointment so that I know that I'm not gonna lose con uh, contact with you. I think it is really important to be able to say, let's try to figure something out. In a week, can we get together if we live close? Can we call, can we FaceTime, can we do something? It is really important to do that. And if you're somebody who has some anxiety and depression, giving people the script, to say to your loved ones, to say to your people, if there's a time when you don't hear from me, if there's a week that goes by that you don't hear from me, I need you to text me. I need you to reach out and say, come on, get out of bed, we're going for a cup of tea. I need you to, here's the script, because people mean well. They want to connect with you, but if you have your list of people and you're able to say, I've got 10 people you know, or 12 people that I know I can count on, 
once a month, you are not overburdening anyone. If you are able to say to somebody, if you don't hear from me, or the third Thursday of each month, let's you know, talk or go out for a cup of coffee. But if you don't hear from me in this amount of time, I want you to text me. Because when I'm in that slump, I can't. I, can't, I don't have the resources. I, don't have the, I have the tools in the toolbox, but I can't reach them. So when that does happen, I want you to think about coming over, even if I say no, don't. Even if it's that I'm in my jammies and looking like crap and I haven't showered for four days, we can sit on your, you know, outside your door of your apartment or on your doorstep or walk to a park and have a cup of tea. But I know because you told me that when I don't hear from you, that means that things might not be so good. So I'm giving you the script when I'm healthy and well so that you can come and get me and just give me that nudge when things aren't going so well. And that is a gift that you can give to other people because it's kind of like, you know, call me if you need me. You, you, I don't know what I need, but if I can say to you, you know, my kid's sick, and if you can make me a lasagna or something like that, that would be really helpful. A person would go, oh, I know what to do now, and that is a gift that you can give people. So I think that that's really, really important. So we talked about a lot of stuff. Um, we talked about self-care. Again, I don't think that you've learned anything per se new. I think uh, hopefully I vowed, maybe did learn something new. I'm not going to minimize what I've said to you. Um, so, you know, maybe you did learn something new, awesome, but I'm hoping I validated you. Are you willing to take five minutes and just to kind of be there and be mindful for yourself? If you are, and if you're not, you want to get up, you want to walk out, if that sounds too scary, not a problem. If you are brave enough and you don't want to do it and you want to just sit for five minutes, awesome as well. That is not a problem, but you can at least be aware of what's going on. So can we try something? Okay, I'm gonna um, put on a little bit of music because that can be helpful. You can sit hopefully with your feet, you know, kind of planted on the ground. And the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is put one hand on your upper chest here and one hand on your belly, if you can. If you have something on your, on your you know, lap, you wanna move it, take a second. And I just want you to breathe. Just breathe. Close your eyes if you want. No one's looking, no one's looking. I'm not even looking. Just breathe a little bit. Take a few breaths in and a few breaths out. Too loud, Bonnie. And I want you to think about which hand is moving. Is that top hand moving? Are you a belly breather? When we're born and we see a baby, babies are belly breathers. We know we breathe from our lungs. Nothing's gonna change that. But a lot of times as we get older, we start having these shallow breaths of these chest breaths. Again, this is not, you're not doing anything wrong or right, but if your hand, your top hand is moving, I want you to think about just getting your bottom hand to move. Expanding your belly and contracting so that you have, your top hand is trying to be as still as possible and your bottom hand is the hand that's moving in and out. And it can be very helpful for me to give you a count. And when you get really good at it, or if you are good at it, the count can be longer and longer. But I want you to think about breathing in for two counts and out for four. Not fast, but just breathing in one, two, and out, one, two, three, four. Breathing in for two. Breathing out. One, two, three, four. Just quieting your brain. Breathe in. One, two. And out. One, two, three, four. And go back to regular breathing, but see if you can continue your belly breathing. So you don't have to follow a count if you don't want, but you're continuing to belly breathe. Now what I want you to do is to think about your body. You can leave your hands exactly where they are as a reminder, or you can move your hands to your lap or to your sides. And I want you to think about your head. I want you to think about the space between your eyes and your hairline, your forehead and thinking about softening that as if you're thinking about melting ice. 
So all those muscles on the top of your forehead are going to just start to relax. Keep breathing in and breathing out. Think about the sides of your foreheads we call the temples. Just relaxing a little bit and think about it as if it's ice melting. Keep breathing. I want you to think about your eyes. Our eyes take in so much and there's all these little micro movements that are happening around your eyes. But I want you to soften them. And you might feel when that happens that your eyes actually go a little deeper into your eye sockets. You're just softening right around your eyes, underneath your eyes, all those little micro movements are slowing down. Then what I want you to do is to think about, as you're breathing, your mouth. Very common for us when we're in this position of rest, to have our tongue up, touching the roof of our mouth or behind our teeth. I want you to think about making space in your mouth. You might need to actually open your mouth a little bit to allow the bottom of your tongue to come down, to drop down just a little bit. And if you do that, you might feel that feeling in the back of your neck of release. You might feel that all of a sudden your shoulders are not so tense anymore. And there's a feeling of space in your mouth. Keep breathing in and out. And as we're at this relaxed state, I want you to think about your heart. We proved here today that our body and our mind are so connected. And I want you to take time to search in your heart for yourself and to say, I'm proud of me. I came here. I did this. I'm here and I'm worth being here. And just being able to acknowledge yourself and everything that you've done because you are so important and you are so loved and there are so many people in this organization now who you can reach out to and friends. And I want you to really think about treating yourself as if you were somebody that you love. Think about the ways you would talk to yourself. Think about the things you would say when you're down or unsure and be able to allow yourself grace. And this was five minutes, so very slowly, I want you to think about moving your fingers and your toes, your hands and your feet, opening up your eyes, letting them open slowly. That was five minutes of your day. How do you guys feel? Good? Yeah. <laughs> That's right? This is, you did this. I just talked a little bit. It's different, right? All of a sudden you're just like, and you might be emotional. You know, you might be emotional. There might be like that self-love. I, I cry all the time when I do this. I practice this. As crazy and erotic as I am, and, and people in this room who know me know I, I, I am. I'm high strong. But I need to do this every once in a while to check in. That was five minutes of your day. That's no time. People are in the bathroom pooping longer for five minutes. <laughs> Take, don't do this while you're pooping. Take five minutes, allow yourself to do this, talk to yourself as if you were somebody that you loved, and I say namaste to all of you. Namaste.